Hello everyone, Simon here. Welcome back to the architecture of Deus Ex Mankind Divided. So in this video we are in the, the first DLC, where we are going to infiltrate the Tavos security offices. It's not that big, so I guess it's like a, a branch office or something. The local, the local office of Tavos security. Uh, yeah, so the whole level is not that big and also not that innovative. <laughs> I think they mostly reused assets from from the main game and just kind of put together a quick DLC. So uh, we start here in a train station, right? So we arrive at this by subway and then we work our way into the Tavos security building. Uh, the train station is the same as all the other ones. Nothing remarkable. In the game, this bit is blocked off, so the train stations usually go up to the, the city street, right? So the city street part of this is blocked off. Instead, there's a bit of a side door into Tavos security, so that's kind of cool, look at that. The Tavos logo is behind the wooden slats, or like the, the light is behind the wooden slats. So it looks, oh, it's kind of ominous and high security and... Anyway, I like that effect. <laughs> it's a pretty cool effect. So this is like the back door, I guess. Tavo Security Services. So there's the logo there. Uh, it's kind of messy though. It seems like they're doing some sort of renovation in here. The, the game offers no explanation as to why they are doing renovations. Although we do see rock hard gypsum board. So uh, they use a lot of chips and board in this game. <laughs> There's also like um, stacks of plywood, I think. Is that plywood? Or that's like a particle board? You have like a wood scraps just kind of pressed into a board. What do we see? Huh? Some building plans? Is that a bath? That's a bathroom. Is that a bathroom? It's a bathroom. Uh, I don't know why they have a bathroom plan. <laughs> <laughs> They're renovating the entrance to the office. I don't think they really thought about this. So that's a basin, right? And that's a bathtub, right? I'm not reading this wrong, am I? Yeah, okay, that's the bathroom. <laughs> Drawings. There's a whole lot of construction equipment. In fact, there's more. There's a lot of cement. There's more construction equipment here than you would need to finish this renovation. So they might do. They might be doing some big renovations. And this is only a part of it. In any case, coming in here, we have a reception desk. Although remember that doorway is basically like a back door, that's not the front door of the building. Over here, there appears to be a bigger door. But we're underground because we're in the subway station. So this could be like, I don't know, underground parking. So this might be like the entrance from the underground car park into the building. Just speculating, right? But there's, there's an entrance here into the Tavos building. Reception, as I said, there's a bit of a security room here. One guy on duty. Although he doesn't see anything, so I don't know how much <laughs> security he provides. He only responds to calls. He doesn't actually actively patrol. Uh, and then this corridor would go around the elevator shaft, except this is blocked off in the game. Um, okay. So I was thinking, like, it's a side door, right? But they have a reception on duty? <laughs> it's like putting a reception in your back door, you're like, really? There's a reception at the back door? Usually, I mean, there's a reception at the front door, because the front door is where people usually come in. The back door, I wonder whether there would be a reception anyway. No big deal. There's a bit of a maintenance hallway back here. Unremarkable. I generally stay away from the maintenance spaces because it's not that useful to look at them. Although here we can see what is this? Concrete frame and a brick infill for the construction. Although there's brick there's stone block there or concrete block there. That's kinda curious. I guess the main structure is just the portal and this is just something in between. Down here we have a a metal sheet metal sleeve, I guess, on the column. So, you know, if you 
bump into it with your forklift or something, you don't break the column, you just damage the, the metal sheeting, which then you can replace cheaply. So a little bit of a protection, protection for the uh, concrete. And nothing worth talking about here, right? No, just pipes and ducts. Alright, let's get back out. Concrete frame with concrete wall panels. Right. It's a bit missing match, huh? Like there's brick infill here, and then there's concrete panel infill here. It's, it's kind of a... And then there's like concrete panel up there. They're mixing it up <laughs> for no reason. <laughs> Okay, back in the proper building. Oh, I guess we might look at the ceiling. So the ceiling is a, like a suspended ceiling. So you have your pipes and your wires and everything up there. And then you have a bit of a light steel frame. And then in the steel frame you attach the ceiling panels. So then you have nice... When it's finished, it'll be like nice timber ceiling panels with lights inside. And then all the wiring is just above that. So with space like that, it's convenient because the panels, you can kind of take the panels off quite easily. They, I don't think they even screw down or bolted down or anything. They're just kind of sitting on the frame. So you can just kind of lift them off and get into the ceiling space. And so if you need to like add wires, add cables, like add like a power cables or network cables or anything you like, you can just kind of fit them into the ceiling space. And it's, it's um, easy to maintain, easy access. You see this in a lot of offices. Sometimes you have like raised floors, so you have raised ceil they have kind of lowered ceilings and then services up there. Or you can have like raised floors and services underneath the floor. But floors, of course, you have to put furniture on the floors, you have to walk on the floors. And so the, the structure to hold up the raised floors have to be a lot more sturdy than for the lowered ceiling. So it's, it's easier on the ceiling, but if you can't do it on the ceiling, you can also do it from on the floor. Uh, all right, let's get in this elevator. Yeah? Yeah, okay, let's get in the ele elevator. Ah. So the elevator here goes metro level and command center. So there's the subway and then into the building proper. Interesting that they labeled it command center. Presumably the real building would have other parts, like there'd be like more offices and other spaces. But here we really only have a, a command center. Okay, so we step out of the elevator. And this is Tavo Security Services. What are we looking at? We got a bit of polished concrete and dark timber. Look at that. Nice dark wood and polished concrete. So very, um, very solid. Assuming that dark wood is also like hardwood, although it would be decorative hardwood, it wouldn't be like structural hardwood. But even though it's decorative hardwood, it appears solid. <laughs> so it looks solid, the concrete obviously looks solid. Looks very sturdy, I think they're trying to portray a, a sense of solidity and reliability because they are a security company, so it's like, oh, we are solid and strong because we provide security. <laughs> I guess that's the idea that they're trying to go for. Very um, muted colors, very gray. Nothing, uh, there's nothing fun about this. <laughs> it's very serious. The lights are a little bit fun. Uh, the lights are a little bit interesting. Although if you look carefully at the light fixture there, the luminaire most of the light is actually blocked because... Can I like point to this? Hold on. Well, I mean, it's not really. So like, this stuff is solid. So that... I mean, as I presume the light is in the panel. But these parts are blocked. So the, the light fixture blocks the light from the... <laughs> it's not efficient is what I'm saying. Um... So it, like it looks interesting, but it's, it's you you never design a real light fixture like this because it's just wasting energy. Because like half the light that's generated by the light is just blocked, and 
it's kind of silly. <laughs> if you if you're a lighting engineer, you look at this and you're like, oh my god, what a disaster! <laughs> oh, what a disaster! But uh, if you're not a lighting engineer, well, that's kind of fancy. Look at that. Uh, another thing is, if I climb up with light fixtures like this, okay. So the light fixtures they are lowered from the ceiling because light, you know, light attenuates with distance. Uh, the, the square, square, square distance. I forgot what it's called. So you know, you have a light source. So the further away, so <laughs> light source at the tip of my finger, like the light kind of goes out in all directions, like in a sphere, right? In a sphere. And so the surface of the sphere scales to the square of the distance. So the further away it is, uh, the, the dimmer the light is, because the, the same amount of light is spread out over a larger area as you go further and further away. And that diminishes in a scale, like, scale, uh, in a square. So it's a, it's a square law. If that makes sense, it's the square of the distance. So, yeah. Anyway, so um, you want the light to be closer because if it's further away, it diminishes very quickly, and so you lose a lot of the uh, efficiency of the light. So you try to keep the light as close to the lit surface as possible, and that's why the light is lowered from the ceiling. Because if you put the light on the ceiling, then you're getting less light on the floor where you need it. However. When you lower the light like this, the ceiling becomes really dark because there's no light going up. And often a light fixture would ha would let a little bit of the light leak upwards. So even though that's not efficient because the light's going up instead of going down where you want to see, but because it looks so dark up there, like if I go back down again, like you, you, you people don't like this kind of spooky thing up above you, <laughs> like kind of this spooky shadows above you, and so to cast light upwards. You would kind of have gaps in the in the light fixture to let the light go up as well as down, just so you can see up there. So that's like an aesthetic thing because you don't want dark ceilings. Um. Anyway, this light fixture is odd in a lot of ways. It's not this. It's not designed by a proper lighting engineer. Is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> it's not not at all. Okay, so coming out of this elevator area, there's the main entrance, I guess. Storage bay that says. So the main entrance is symmetrical. We have concrete columns. It's brightly lit. We have uh, big lights on these columns. And uh, there's something a little bit fortress like about this, isn't there? Like it's concrete, and like there's steps up, and then there's like. Spaces there, it's kind of like a tower, two towers beside the main gate of a city wall. It kind of, the, the, the layout of this kind of suggests those things, right? So that's cool. What it really is, so that's the main gate, and then on each side you have a security office. A security office there, and the security office does overlook the people coming in, right? So you can see what's going on out there, kind of lines aren't helping that much. And then on the other side, we have another security room. And another dude, although this guy is watching porn apparently. But there's another security guy on this side. So there's double security. <laughs> they thought one security room wasn't enough. It wasn't enough security, so they put in two security rooms. <laughs> It's a grand entrance. I mean, I like that they put in the effort to make a grand entrance. <laughs> it's uh, a little amusing how much security there is. And I guess there's a little waiting area down here too. If you're waiting for a meeting or something. Okay, before we go in there, let's check out the storage bay, as they call it. So we step in here and immediately we lose the the dark wood, and we're back into the uh, concrete blocks. So this is not a public space. We are back in the service area. We have a big warehouse. Look at that. And then at the other end of the big warehouse, we have giant 
uh, vehicle loading. I guess it'll be a loading dock out there. And uh, the trucks would back into here. And you'd unload this stuff. We have forklifts. Right. So there this is Tavos is a security company, right? And I think this is all their security hardware. If you come over this way, you can see that these are sentry bots. So these are sentry bots. And maybe we have like, I don't know, this is water? It's probably water. Contents check and security sealed. Interesting. And I guess there's like equipment, weapons, armor, who knows, right? And maybe they also ship troops out of here. I'm not sure. So the cargo definitely comes through here. Maybe not troops though, because there's no like changing rooms. There's no like... Anyway, they're a security f company, so they'll need a place for their people to move out. Because it's just it's security, the security personnel as well as um, equipment, right? Okay, so around the main warehouse area, over this side, we have an office. I guess this is for the warehouse staff. You do need somebody keeping track of where all the stuff is. Um, I'm gonna look at this. How do you get the bots? down to the trucks. They've put like staircases and these railings here. And you can't actually get these bots out unless there's a crane up there. There's no crane that we can see. Yeah. So the game, for gameplay reasons, they put in these areas, like this down here also doesn't make any sense. So around the perimeter you have a lowered walkway, and then you have more storage space down here, but then how do you get stuff in and out? <laughs> so because it's a video game, they put in these spaces for you to sneak around, because there's enemies in here and you need to sneak past the enemies. But this really makes no sense as a storage space, because why would you ha have this like stairs down and then storage. Like it's so inconvenient. You can't get in, can't get a forklift in here. You have to like carry the stuff out by hand. So uh, it's it's kind of nonsensical as a warehouse. But as a video game, you have enemies walking around up here, and then you can like sneak down there or sneak up there to get around them. And there's more. There's also like walkways up above us as well. And those also make, don't make any sense. If we uh, get up to the elevated walkways... But they lead nowhere, right? <laughs> like, that walkway doesn't lead anywhere. And they're super convoluted. Like, a walkway would just be like a straight path. Like a straight... maybe like a square around the perimeter. Note these walkways lead in all sorts of directions. And then there's a gap. I, is that a bridge? Is that meant to be a bridge? And then that doesn't go anywhere. So yeah, so this is again walkways for players to sneak around in the video game. But in reality, the walkways don't go in, they don't do anything. Right, this is for you to climb up and sneak around. So that's the storage area, the storage bay, as they call it. Like superficially, it looks like a warehouse, but when you look at the, the details, they don't make sense as a warehouse. <laughs> they make more sense as a video game. Okay, moving on. Let's go in here into what they call the command center. Mm, command center. Does this look like a command center to you? Uh, yeah, maybe. Maybe. I mean, think about it. Is it a command center? So what's a command center? What's usually a command center? So usually a command center, you want... 
situational awareness is the most important thing. Communication between the team members is the second most important thing. And if you think about the space, it really doesn't fit. Okay, first of all, what is a good command center? Let me just um, go to the browser. So this is NASA's shuttle white flight control room in Houston, Texas. So this is NASA. NASA Space Shuttle Control Center. You have a big screen on one side. Everybody faces the big screen and they can all see all the data. The tables are, they have their own screens, of course. They're fairly low. You can see the other people. If you need to talk to someone, you can just kind of stand up and talk to them. And then the, the commander or the, one in, the person in charge is here. The person in charge is back here at the back with a raised table and the person in charge can see everybody at once. So this is a good command center because why? Everybody is on the same page. We all know what's going on. And then everybody's also doing their own thing. They can talk to each other if necessary quite easily. And the person in charge can see everything at once. Right, there's nothing that they're going to be surprised by. So that's a good command center, a good mission control. Because like everybody is aware of all the data and especially the boss back here is aware of everything that's going on. So situational awareness, super important, especially when you have so much data and so much going on, being able to like see anything at any time, super important. And just being able to see what everybody is doing and everybody also being able to see what everybody else is doing, super important. And you would assume that the more important stuff is at the back and the less important stuff. So anything that you can't really change is up front because the people at the back can see the people at the front. The people at the front, they can't really see the people at the back without turning around or just walking back here. So uh, the less important stuff will be there. Or rather, let's say you have like a tree, right? You have like, you know, a thing that controls multiple other things and then that thing controls multiple other things. So the, the things that are being controlled, they can't make any big decisions. So they don't need to see anything else. Whereas the ones who are doing the controlling, they make decisions. And so they need to see the ones that they're controlling. You see what I mean? Uh, so like in the military sense, you might say that, okay, the, you have like platoons and then brigades and then uh, I don't know my terminology. I shouldn't have chosen military. <laughs> I should have chosen something else. But the idea is to give a chain of, a chain of command and each layer commands multiple lower layers and each layer mo commands multiple lower layers. And so then you, like it goes up in a tree and so you, you would arrange that tree in the space so that, you know, this person commands these guys, and then these, this guy commands these guys, and then this, these guys command those guys. And so then the ones down here, they don't get to make any decisions anyway, so they don't need to see anything. But the people who do make decisions need to see what they're doing. So that's how you would arrange the space for this to work. So this is a good mission control design, is how that works. Situational awareness chain of command, communication. So in this space, <laughs> the situational awareness is awful, first of all. Like, what are you doing? You're sitting here and you're looking at blank wall. You're just looking at nothing. <laughs> the situational awareness of this guy, zero. <laughs> same with all the other guys. This guy can't see a thing. Same as him, same as him. And then this guy, okay, he's here. He can like see those two guys, but he has to turn his head. He can't see that guy. And he has to turn all the way around to see that guy. Like super awkward. Same for the other guys. All right, you can see that, but you can see that. Oh, it's to the, oh, turn all the way around just to see them. So that's super bad. And then we have big screens there, but the screens are all facing different ways. <laughs> like here, everybody can see the same screens. Here, yeah, like, I want to see what's on that screen. I have to like go around there. Is that the that's different data? So that's different data. That's all different data. 
So if I want to see what's on the screens, I have to like walk around like this and I can't see everything all at once. <laughs> Awful. Right, so the situational awareness here is atrocious. And then we have more desks on the outside. Like, I can't... There's a wall there. Why is there a wall there? I can't see what that guy's doing. I can't see what anyone's doing. Because there's a wall in the middle of the command room. So these guys can't see anything. And nor can any of these guys see what they're doing. <laughs> so nobody knows what anyone else is doing. So this is like actually really bad. The design of this command center? Awful. But why? Why did they do this? Because it's not really a command center, it's a video game level. It's a video game level where you are sneaking around. And the lack of visibility helps you sneak around. There's a camera there, but like, you're coming around, you're trying to dodge the camera, so you're like sneaking behind these desks down here like this. Oh, look, there's a guy back there. I'm gonna sneak around, sneak around, sneak around. Nobody can see me. Oh, there might be a guy back there. Oh, let me just jump over this. Sneak around back here. So as a, like a, a stealth video game, all these walls and all these desks, and they're all arranged to help you sneak around. But they're not, they're not designed to be a command center, right? So it's, <laughs> it's a really bad, bad command center. But that's because it's a video game. And I've kind of said this in, in previous videos, but I understand that you would prioritize gameplay over architecture because it's a video game and people are here for a game. But I, th I still think you can make the architecture fit. And the fact that it doesn't fit, it's less convincing. Because this, this is not a convincing command center, is what I'm saying. Like, I, I, I look at this and I don't believe it. I don't believe that it is a command center. So this, the, this, the suspension of disbelief is broken. That's my issue, right? <laughs> Over here we have another big hallway, it's blocked off in the game, another big logo. So this might be the street entrance into Tavo security. Although we don't know what's over there, right? There, may, there might be more, more stuff over there. But if there, was, if there was a street level entrance, probably come in from this way. We have toilets on each side. Do you remember this one? I believe this toilet is copy and pasted from the Task Force 21 toilets. 21, no, Task Force 29 toilets. It's 29, right? I recognize these tiles. Yeah, I think this is just copy and pasted. Uh, another toilet here, same thing. We won't go upstairs yet. Over here, we have the IT departments. We have servers. We have IT staff. I wonder if they would need more servers than this. I guess there's quite a few. Interesting. These are meant to be secure servers. Right, cool. Don't really have any complaints about this. And then around this way, we have break room and locker room. So here it's brighter, look at that. We have white, white. Out here it's dark gray, right? So the break room is brighter, a bit more cheerful. A bit less uh, dreary and depressing. <laughs> a bit less oppressive. So that's nice. Break room, a lighter mood, and then the lockers. Interestingly, the lockers, there's no showers and there's no changing areas, but there are lockers, there's towels. <laughs> there's towels, but there's no showers. I think they just didn't put them in, but there should be showers, I think. There's a lot of lockers. Um, 
probably should have separate rooms for the lockers and the break room. Because this is where you eat. You want to separate the food area from the body odor area, is what I'm trying to say. This is where people smell. <laughs> smell bad. Locker room. You know how locker rooms smell, right? You know. And so the locker room smell is gonna drift out and you're trying to eat. <laughs> and you can smell the lock. So, th <laughs> so the locker room really should be like a proper room <laughs> with two doors. And there probably should be like toilets and, and showers back here. Um, this is uh, a little bit concerning. <laughs> the locker room smell. Alright, so that should be two rooms instead of one. And then over this way, going down, there's an infirmary down here. What is this? A lot of bare concrete? Right, same thing as before. Going downstairs, downstairs, downstairs. That's probably a... Why did they put storage here? A seating area, artwork... And then here's the infirmary. Infirmary is decently equipped, right? They have two beds. And some medical stuff. I guess this is first aid. I don't imagine they'll be doing any serious surgery here. Infirmary, I'm just wondering how much injury they see, how, how many injuries they see, because these are security guys, right? How often do they get into physical altercations? Not sure, but they do have like a, they have some facility here for injuries. I am wondering if it shouldn't be closer though, closer to the entrance and maybe closer to the storage area because where are you most likely to get injuries, right? Probably coming in from a from a mission and probably in the storage area. So I feel like the, the infirmary should be closer to where the, the injuries happen just because you don't want to have to go too far to get treatment. The faster you get treatment, the better off you are, right? So you want to put the infirmary closer to the action, if possible. Okay, so that's all the lower areas. Let's go upstairs. Which we go first? This way. Upstairs we have mezzanine, conference room. Still a lot of bare concrete, still the same dark wood. Although, once we get to here... Oh, we have like a geometric lights. And then this again. This light, but then this stuff, this triangle stuff, blocks most of the light. <laughs> I don't know what that's supposed to... Is that just decorative? I guess it's just decorative. <laughs> but most of the light is just blocked. And not actually lighting the space. <laughs> Okay, we have a conference room. Right, conference table. We have some fancy timber ceilings here though, and like... Recessed light in there. And metal bits there, so that's kind of cool. The, uh, the conference room ceiling. It's quite interesting actually. It's kind of nice, I like it. The recessed light. And the way the recessed light is, the light kind of focuses in on the desk. So that's kind of cool. Big screen there. Nice. Out this way, this is a, a maintenance area. Unremarkable. Again, like most of the light is blocked. <laughs> Here we have an office. It says operations. So we have a modest office, a desk, computer, not too many filing cabinets, and then finally we have the head of operations, office of the lieutenant. So here's the boss, the boss is in here, 
he has a fireplace and sofas. Ah, this seems a little too warm. <laughs> you know, given how harsh the rest of the building is, like look how kind of gray, everything's like gray and dark and harsh. You come in here and there's like a, a fireplace and couches. This seems a little too soft to me. Is it, is it just me or do you feel that way? <laughs> this guy's the lieutenant, like he's the boss. The boss of a security outfit, shouldn't he be the hardest guy? Like, shouldn't he be the, be the toughest person? Why does the... Uh, the lieutenant... have couches? Aren't you, aren't you there leading the troops? I guess not. Um, so, no, I do have issues about... The, well, okay, first of all, the room itself, nice. I like it. It's dim, high contrast, with a nice fireplace, it's very moody. Right, kind of low light, moody, kind of a romantic, a little bit romantic. But romantic is not security services. Tavo security services is not about romance, is my problem. That just seems a little too nice. And then this, okay, so the lieutenant, he does overlook the command center, but he's so far away and it's behind tinted glass, and he can't actually interact with anyone down there directly. I, th I, th I feel like he's too removed from the action. And although, you know, sometimes, like the corporate, the corporate boss might be removed from the action. It makes sense, but in, like, in anything that's not a security service, is what I'm trying to say. Like, a security service, it's... You need to lead the troops from the front. You, you, you can't lead the troops behind tinted glass like this. So this is not a security boss's room. It's how I feel about it. Maybe it is. But if it is, then I, I wouldn't respect Tavos very much, is what I'm trying to say. Like, if I want to hire a security outfit, I want to know that the guy in charge gets in amongst the action, is what I wanted, out of my security team. So uh, yeah, interesting. Interesting choice that they would like put the, the lieutenant in a in a cozy room like this with a fireplace and everything's low light and moody and romantic. <laughs> it, just, it doesn't fit. It, I don't think it fits. I like the room, just not, just not here, just not for the security chief. <laughs> if it's well, somewhere else, it, I'd, I'd like it a lot. It makes a lot of... S it's, it's very nice, but it doesn't make any sense. Okay, let's get back outside. So that is Tavo's security. It's a small level. And there's not that much architecture to look at. Alright, so let's summarize. Um. Once again, we find ourselves in spaces that are really designed for gameplay first and foremost. And then they have like a, a very light flavoring of architecture, architecture put into it to make it look kind of like what they say it is. But if you really look at the layout of the spaces, you can see that it's not what they say it is, right? So we have a Tavo security office, and like the, the color scheme, the materials, it all fits, right? The concrete, the heavy concrete, and some of the like the fortress-like spaces, the high contrast lighting, like, all of these say security, right? So it like the the styling of it superficially looks like a, a competent security company. But then, you know, like the command center down there. When you really think about it, that's a terrible command center. And if you go to like a security company and they show you their command center and it looks like this, you know their operations and their and their mission planning and their and their operations is just completely dysfunctional, right? There's no way <laughs> there's no way you can effectively command anything with a space like that because you can't see anything 
Right, you have no situational awareness. Everybody is, can't see it. Nobody can see anyone else. Right, you just don't believe that there's a competent team directing a complex operation from this space. That's just not what this space is capable of. So it's one of these things where you, like, I just can't believe it. I just can't believe that this is a security outfit. Even like, so the, if you don't look past the surface, it's fine. But if you look at the, the layout, it's not fine. And that goes for a lot of things in this game, right? They have video game levels dressed up as certain things. But they don't actually, they wouldn't actually function as those things. And in this case, the command center doesn't really function as command center. And the storage bay, it kind of looks like a storage bay, but then like the, the middle bit, it works. But then the outer bits and then the walkways and not, nothing else actually works as a storage bay. So, um, yeah. Again, it's not as convincing as it could be. Superficially, it looks right. But look closer and everything falls apart. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah. So, at video game levels, they, they're fine. They're great. Like, the gameplay is fine. But the architectural merit is is lacking. Anyway, that's it for Tavos Security. In the next video, we are going to visit a Palisade Blade. Remember those those things over the river? The the thing that kind of goes up and then a big horizontal cantilever? Uh, Pal Palisade Shard. Is it Shard or Blade? I forgot what they're called. Attention. We're going to one of those. Alright, see you next time.